Welcome to the very first Trailblazer video on this channel and hopefully the first of many and that is beginner ways to make money in our starting area of Missilin and I guess Karamja as well. This video will cover a few money makers but keep in mind these are designed for very early game money makers within the first few hours of playing the new league and they're designed in order to get your first few 10Ks. There are obviously going to be some better money making methods in this area, but those will also have higher requirements and we're not going to be covering those in this video. If that's something you're interested in me doing, definitely leave a comment down below. Or if you also want a video like this for some other areas, leave a comment down below for that as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. But first things first, before we get into those consistent money makers, we're going to be covering one that isn't consistent, but is a one-time thing. You can't forget to do your Stronghold of Security free 10k GP. It barely lies in our beginning area of Mistelin, but it does count in fact. And you're definitely going to want to come through here. And if you've never been or you're just getting started, once again, you have to wrap around through these doors all the way through multiple different layers in order to get to the chest room. And once you make it into the chest room, you'll be able to open the chest, giving a small incremental award. I believe the first chest gives 2K, the second level gives three, and the final gives five. There's also a bonus chest all the way at the bottom floor, which you can get some fancy boosts if that's something you're into. But regardless, doing this stronghold is an absolute must if you're looking to start getting into money making. And honestly, I would recommend doing this almost immediately as the league starts. But now that the stronghold is covered, let's go ahead and jump into some of the other ways to consistently get some starter cash. Now for the first consistent money maker that probably plenty of people are actually going to do. So there may be some competition for trees and that is chopping willow trees as well as use once you get the level and then fletching those logs into longbows and selling them to the general store. I went ahead and did the testing and regardless if the store is already full stock or overstock, whichever way you want to word it, you longbows unstrung will still be worth 64 GP and willows will be worth 16. And that comes out to about 450 GP per inventory for willows in around 1600 to 1700 GP per inventory for use. And now that might not seem like a lot, but if you do choose one of the first two relics, you are going to be getting inventories incredibly quickly. And that is because for the first relic, every single time you successfully chop a log, you will end up getting two. Not to mention you'll also be getting double experience on top of what everybody else is getting. Therefore, you'll technically be getting logs and XP twice as fast although that does not correlate to your fletching. And then if you do choose Relic 2, you will take longer to get the logs in your inventory, but as soon as you have a full inventory of logs in the snap of your fingers, you'll have a full inventory of unstrung longbows that you can sell immediately. Therefore, I would definitely recommend if you choose one of the first two Relics and you're looking for money makers, this might be a great one for you. The next money maker you can do in the starting area is killing tree spirits and these are located in the Enchanted Valley which is actually accessible immediately because we already have a Draman staff and access to fairy rings and the fairy ring code for these are BKQ and what you'll need is a axe and probably the easiest spell to use will be fire wave which is the only the level 13 spell and you actually are able to safe spot these you just hit chop the trees and run behind this little bush and there are some other locations within this area as well one important thing to know is that these are actually catered to your level so the earlier the better you can get in here because they will have less hp as a level three these tree spirits are only level 14. But with that, let's go ahead and get into what they drop, which is the rune axe as the most important thing. They also drop Addy axes and mithril axes, all of which you can sell to the general store. The rune axe alks for a little over 7k, or you can sell it to the general store for a little over 5. Not to mention, every single kill on average, you get 5.5 nature runes which you actually can sell to the general store for a good chunk of change as well, but I would recommend keeping them because they will be incredibly valuable later game when you are alking and not having to spend 200 plus GP to buy them. And honestly, even if you're not coming here to make money, I would recommend coming here at least to get your rune axe, especially the earlier the better while they have less HP and you'll have to use less runes. 
We can go ahead and scroll down. They also drop a good amount of herbs, some seeds, and they do have access to the rare drop table, which you could pick up some incredibly rare things if you do get lucky. Now, another great consistent moneymaker that you can literally do as soon as you start on the world is thieving. Go ahead and start pickpocketing one of the two men that are literally right beside Lumbridge Castle, which is most likely where we're going to be spawning. You'll pickpocket these men until you get level 10 thieving, which shouldn't take very long at all. And with each successful pickpocket, you'll get a round, I believe, 3 GP. But now with level 10, you're actually going to begin pickpocketing the farmer. And ultimately, our end goal for this miscellane area is actually beginning to pickpocket Varrock Guards. And that is because with each successful pickpocket, you will actually get 30 GP. And it is completely your choice if you do want to camp the farmer all the way from 10 to 40. You can completely do that. Or there is increments along the way that you can jump around the map to, one of which is including ham members, which is required for level 15 for female or 20 for male. And you can actually get some coins from pickpocketing them as well as an assortment of other items, which you can definitely look at that table. And if that's something that entices you, definitely jump over there. You can even get some easy clue scrolls, although it is going to be pretty difficult to complete one considering the area we start in is all we have at the time. But once you get up to level 40, Guards will actually become a consistent money maker, although you will need food. That is one thing to note because with each unsuccessful pickpocket, you actually get hit a three. But apart from that, this is actually a method I would highly, highly recommend if you do plan on taking Kandarin as one of your other areas. And that is because you will then unlock Arty Knights at level 55 thieving which will be incredible XP, as well as very easy and very consistent money making. Before we end off this video, I do actually have one more honorable mention that I do want to add to the end of this list. Well, I guess it's technically two, and that is Obor and Bryophyta, the hill giant and moss giant bosses. And the main reason I didn't include these in the video is because they're not necessarily something that you can camp consistently or do consistently. But with that said, I felt like they needed to be mentioned, and that's because killing hill giants and moss giants are a great way to train, and if you do choose to use that in this area, you have the benefit of potentially getting keys, and if you happen to be lucky enough to get one of the keys, both Obor and Bryophyta have plenty of rune items on their drop table, as well as plenty of other good drops. Definitely very good bosses that will make some great beginner money if you can get lucky enough to get a couple of those keys within the first few hours of the game. Not to mention a very good upgrade if you do get a rune item that you do want to keep. With both of them being located in the beginning area, I felt they had too good of drop tables not to at least mention. That's going to do it for this guide on how to make some early money in the starting region of Trailblazer League. If you guys are interested in this type of video for other regions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm incredibly excited for this league, and I'm sure you guys are as well. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing or dropping a like. Both massively help my channel. But other than that, I have a tips video coming out for Trailblazer in a few days, and if you're interested in that, I hope it can help a few of you out.